so we got it handed in the MT-09 and we got this bad boy I'll do a proper walk around later because I just want to get out of here get it home see how we get on got brand new tyres scary it's a bit wet on the old roads <laughs> but yeah it's cool mate um, It's a lot quieter than my other bike, obviously, because I had that stupid race exhaust. It's a quite stupid, I loved it. But, um, yeah, I think this is going to be a lot more usable for me. So, we're going to have a bit of a wobble home on it. See so how we go. I was playing with the idea of putting it in rain mode, but I think I'm going to be a bit braver than that. I think we'll go street on these brand new tyres. We won't go as far as sport. And then we'll get it going. How many miles has it done? Odo, look at that, zero miles, trips 0.3, which would suggest he didn't do his pre-ride checks on it, but hey ho, we'll see how we get on. Just making all the right noises, etc, etc. Oh, this feels weird, mate. <laughs> It feels big. Thank you. Well, I've got to try and remember my way home now. Right, my fuel's just gone amber. Right, I think first stop's a fuel station. So they ain't give me much fuel, but they never do, do they? Nice guy though. Like I say, he had a, a bit of a job yesterday trying to get a Yamaha to sort this out. There was a few issues with, um, when I say unlocking the bike, because it's a pre-registered bike, it's a 24 plate, and it's been sat in the showroom, so it's got zero miles as you can see. And um, Yeah, not the best, it's just... Um, I think, like I say, I think they have a win... I'll tell you what happened basically, we couldn't... I was supposed to cut the bike yesterday, but we couldn't get it started. And the reason I couldn't get it started is because you need a code from Yamaha to um, start a new bike, to sort of unlock it, if you like. And, um, yeah, they put the code in, didn't work. The reason being, it has been registered a while ago because I think they only get the bike off Yamaha for so long before they have to register it, which is why you get these pre-registered bikes. And um, yeah, it had gone outside the window for unlocking it, which then creates a whole process which is quite time consuming to get it going. Let's go in there, let's see if we can... Let's not take the piss, let's just do that. No then. What you got? I won't put a load in here. Uh, we've got E5, that'll work. Alright, to be continued, see you in a bit. So, try again. Right, we're on the MT-07. No, we're not. That's a big lie. We're on, I'm going to keep saying that. We're on the, M the Tracer 9 GT+. Plus. I've just literally just put a little bit of fuel in it, just to get me back. I'll fill it up properly later. So had a little play with the panniers. I think I just nearly took one off by mistake, but... So yeah, so we got it. I was amazed. That's what, that wasn't expected today, really. Um, yeah, when I spoke to him earlier, it was like, well, I didn't. When I spoke to him more to the point um, yesterday, it just didn't sound very positive at all. I just thought it's going to be definitely going to be next week. So I thought, well, we can only try. I'm not very confident about filtering on this yet because I've got those big things on the back. I'm not quite sure about whether my handlebars are wider or they are or what. So <laughs> we'll see. 
let's take it easy. These are brand new tyres. The roads are uh, not too bad, but damp in places. So we've just got it in street mode for now, until I've scrubbed these tyres in a bit. I think rain mode was probably a bit too wimpy. Um, but yeah, I like it. It's a nice position. I think the, the seat's on a lower setting. It doesn't feel too bad at the moment, but I think from a leg space when we're riding point of view, I think the, the higher seat position for me, because I'm six foot two, will probably be a lot better. Yeah, I stopped at the garage. Just wanted to put a little bit of fuel in, and I also just wanted to um, get a very initial rudimentary quad lock on the bike, which is there. I've had to put it in like a landscape view, which I'm not really used to, but at least I'm getting some sort of instructions. It's not wired in yet, so I'm hoping my battery lasts until I get home and stuff, so I can have a proper tinkle with it then. But, uh, A sat nav as always from this place is trying to send me down some really stupid places so we're ignoring it until it start, catches up with where I want to go <laughs> yeah there's a bit of sweet moment that handing over the MT-07 I do like that bike um, I could tell he liked it he took it in the garage after I'd left him and he was revving it <laughs> yeah no it's cool mate I was going to try and get the um, the Insta360 up on this, but I think actually, what are you doing, mate? I don't need indecisive drivers in front of me when I'm. This like this bike. Look, say it's literally done one mile, <laughs> and half of that has been done by me. So yeah, it's a brand new, fresh out the box kind of deal. Sounds quite nice actually. I was saying to my nephew, he's like, oh, you have to get an Akropovic or Akropovic, whatever you want to call it. And um, I was like, I don't know if I do, because hey, to buy it off Yamaha is two grand. The only reason I do it would be for the noise. And although I really do like noisy bikes, I love my MT07 with that noisy race line pipe on it, it was great. But I only use that generally for blatting around on A roads, you know, for an hour or two and then an hour somewhere, hour and a half somewhere, get a brew or a burger, an hour and a half back, it's fine. It's perfect for it in fact. But um because this is gonna be a mile man, you know, something I want to do longer trips on and stuff, you've got to ask yourself. I think we're gonna have to fucking go in a bus lane here, otherwise we're gonna get fucked over. Yeah, he don't want to do it either. Yeah, but you're going to block all those guys, my little friend. Not see anything. I don't think there's any cameras around. And if there are, then you've got to make sensible decisions. Alright, we're ringing the left. I see what they mean. Wow, he's going for it. See what I mean about the position of the indicators in relation to that joystick? It's, uh, I really like the position of it. It doesn't feel like a... I've got to be honest, when I saw it in the showroom and I first walked up to it, I've never had a big bike. When when I say that, I've had I've had bikes with bigger engines than this. Like this is an 890 triple, um, the famous CP3 from Yamaha that everyone loves. I've never ridden it, so I don't know. I'll reserve. If it's anything as good as a CP2, yeah, mate, it's going to be awesome. Um, and you know, people say both engines are awesome. Yeah, I have to, have to agree with CP2, having had that experience. But, um, yeah, first impressions of this is beautiful, mate. Um, p 
position's nice. It does feel like you're in a, you know, a nice upright position. You could do a lot of miles like this, which is kind of the point. But like I say, a walk such as it's a big, well, to me, it's a big bike. It's bigger than any, you know, the MTS 7 is quite a small bike, but it doesn't feel small when you're on it. It feels nimble. Um, same with most big bikes. When you're on them, they don't feel that big. Um, but this just feels really nice. I'll tell you what, the panniers would take a bit of getting used to because when I was getting petrol, I parked really close to the um, petrol pump and then bloody blocked myself in. <laughs> I couldn't get out to pay. I was like, oh my god, what are you doing? Yeah, so I've had a few of those sort of moments. So there's going to be a bit, few things to get used to on this bike. But I have to say, I do like it. It's, it's a nice position and, you know, initial first impressions are it's nice. I'm going to take it a bit easy on this, purely because we've got damp roads to contend with. And uh, I've got, you know, yeah, like I say, I've got, I think we've done three miles now. <laughs> so, yeah, as always, I set myself a challenge, haven't I? Mate. Yeah, that picks up very nicely. So the other thing I've done, which just purely for novelty value more than anything, is um, I've got the heat grips on, albeit on the lowest setting, but you can feel it. That's very pleasant. I likes that. Yeah, that's nice, mate. So, yeah, lots of bells and whistles. It's got the... Uh, uh, use this, the quick shifter at lower speeds. See what it's like going down. Never used a blipper before. That's my first blipping experience. Let's have another go at that. It does blip. What about with the throttle open? It's supposed to do that as well. <laughs> oh, mate, that's just going to get me in trouble. Uh, dude, that is fun on a stick. That is so good. No, I'm going to fill it up when I get back on it. Oh, I just wish I could have got this yesterday. I could have the whole day on it today, but still. My wife, in her wisdom, has invited people round tonight, which is great. I love having people round. But there's a conflict here at the moment because I want to play with my motorbike, don't I? She goes, oh, well, you can come home and help me tidy up. Yeah, right, whatever. Yeah, it's good. I quite like, I like the upright thing. And my nephew said once you get, get the hang of it, you'll, you know, You'll love it. So, see if he's right. I think he's probably going to be right. That mirror keeps fucking moving down by itself. Yeah, I don't know how you tighten that. Hopefully, you can. No, we'll figure it out in a minute. Teething problems. If that's all that's wrong with it, I'll be quite happy. Yeah, I was worried, if you watch the MT07, the final ride video that I did over here, it wasn't as good as I hoped because I was racing against the clock to get there in time to do the deal and hand the bike over and get this because literally this bike came good at the 11th hour and leaving my house at the time I did, I then had literally 55 minutes at the dealership before it closed. So, talk about fine margins. Yeah, that's nice. That quick shift is about a billion times better than the, um, what you call it, the one on the MTS7, which was OEM Yamaha, but it wasn't after, you know, it kind of aftermarket if you like, you know, if you don't fit it from the factory, because that thing was clunky. 
this feels a bit more like my Translogic thing that I've got on my GSX-R which I paid a hell of a lot more money for than the um, Yamaha version. I think I paid 180 quid for the Yamaha quick shifter whereas Translogic was more like 450. Now you can tell, you know, it's a rip. it's a very complex, complex is that the word? Yeah, I suppose, you know, it's like more complex electronics, so it thinks about what it's doing, it cuts one cylinder at a time, makes it all very smooth. So I imagine this is something very similar. don't think I need... To. There's a, um, one of the things that R&G and various companies like that sell are mirror extenders. Actually, I've got a... Normally on these sort of bikes, all you get to see is your elbow, but I'm actually getting a pretty good view behind me out of these mirrors. Apart from that one, which is needs adjusting because it's about to fucking drop off of the road. That's right, I don't need that one particularly at the moment. I'll figure it out. Right, then. I turn right somewhere near here. <laughs> That's a danger, isn't it, when you got... Right, indicators. Isn't it funny how you revert back to type? I think I'm going to try and keep this below five for a bit. I'll see what the manual says. I've got one. So, not sure what the running in protocol is for this, but. If it's anything like the MT-07, just keep it below 5,000 RPM for the first few miles. Oh, there's a bit of an induction noise. A bit of a howl. I ain't turning right. Why am I turning right? Oh, my... Oh, I'll just do it. Let's see what happens. It's quite a nice howl in sixth. Oh, I see what it's probably doing back there. It's probably taking me back, sort of, very gingerly around the corner still. <laughs> Yeah, that screen seems to be putting the wind kind of around the top of my head, I would suggest. I think about here, upwards. So I think, put it, I've got a little Puig screen extender floating around at home. Might try that, see if that gets it off you. Because I can see a lot of people, a lot of them put um, a shorter screen on. So that... Um, it hits them more in the chest, like a sports, you know, like a, a naked, really. Uh, rather than having it diverted at your head. <laughs> so. Marden, yeah. trying to sort this mirror out it's distracting me I'm just thinking mirror rather than enjoying the ride because it's kind of showing me the pavement
that's better. It's one of the things that work. If you, yeah, that's better. All right, let's go. We have like um, some visors on the aircraft at work and literally if you try and twist them one way they just go limp and just flop around. I think this that mirror looks like it's got a similar a similar disposition. So yeah, first impression's really nice. The position's nice. The heated grips just give me a little tickle of warmth. They're on the lowest setting. But it's actually quite nice to have warm hands as you're riding along. Um, the engine certainly picks up when you need it to. Just a bit nervous about tyres at the moment. I always am on new tyres and all that sort of malarkey. And then obviously one of the problems with watching too many YouTube videos, you hear stuff about OEM tyres being crap and they're not of the same standard as if you bought them off a the shell. Da -da -da. So I'm waiting for the tyres to do something horrible to me, so I've got the fear. <laughs> So there's that. I've already got some new brake pads lined up for this um, SBS sensor thing, so the brakes feel fine. Um, but you know, why not? Why not give yourself every opportunity to have the best riding experience possible? So yeah, it seems okay to do that. So I think I'm going to do that. It's a fairly cheap thing to do. I think I'll see how I get on with the tyres. I say the MC07 had M um, OEM tyres on it and they were absolutely fine. As soon as you knock it into six, it goes, it makes a completely different noise. That might not be induction, it might just be. I don't know what that is. goes away when you wind it on a bit. Who knows? Lots of things to get used to. Yeah, that's nice. Great day though today. It lies what the weather forecast is, it's always going to be dry, it's going to be this and that, but at least it's not raining, so that's the main thing. When you see dry, you always think sunny, it's far from sunny. I think the seats needs to go up. I mean, I don't think it makes that much difference, but what is it, 15 centimetre, 15 mil more to the point, oh, I don't know, something like that. I think it's like 835 at the high setting and 820 at the low, so I think we'd rather have that extra 15 mil. <laughs> My long legs. Yeah, it's very forgiving. I'm quite happy to just roll on from four fur where I'm just a bit lazy with the gears. Why not? Not used to having a big screen, but it doesn't. I always thought that would be a bit intrusive, but it's actually not at all. Goudhurst, so back to the sort of areas where I know. Yeah, you can tell these engines are like, have been designed for the modern road 
like the modern road bike engine it's not a, it's not a detuned sports bike engine it just rides lovely you know very forgiving it's not trying to it's not trying to kill me but then you you get little little glimpses of the fact that you know the thing's probably got a bit of power if you need it anything oh, that's a wind Goudhurst, lovely duck pond very nice There seems to be a theme with me I'm picking up new motorbikes there's always wet roads involved it's annoying because I did drop the MT-07 off I was absolutely spotless when I left my house with it it certainly wasn't by the time I got there but it wasn't as bad as the other day so I was a bit more selective with the roads I took but yeah this just seems to be a theme of me it's just sort of talking about lack of grip and being a bit nervous about new tyres on wet roads and it's just very um, changeable conditions, it's, it depends where the tree cover is I think it's like where there's no tree cover there's, there's usually a dry line to be found but where there's tree cover it's usually just bloody wet <laughs> it's not what you want mate, it's not what you want uh. so yeah, I like it I think um, I'll certainly get a bit more used to it and a bit braver on it as time progresses but I say it's just slowly slowly and all that be a straight line here over now never noticed that host complex pretty cool So yeah, initial mods for this um, stuff, have, like I say, I've, I've ordered some bits and bobs. So, so far we've ordered um, from Pyramid Moto, uh, fender extender, rear hugger extender, like a physical, I don't know what you call it really, it's like a little piece of plastic that hangs down between your shock and your rear wheel, so it's like a physical block. It should stop a spray spraying up into the, the linkages and bits that you want to keep a bit less mucky. Uh, including the shock, so I've got one of them. Uh, I've got another screen to play. Ooh, fucking hell, that felt weird. Still getting used to what this feels like when it's a bump, it feels odd um, compared to what I'm used to. Um, what else? Yeah, I'm, I've got a little thing to hang up the panniers on the wall because I probably won't keep them on all the time. Probably just for when I'm going on longer trips. read about that. I thought I was going to try the cruise control but it's not obvious to me. Oh, we have rain by the looks of it. It's not supposed to rain! <laughs> yeah, you definitely do get wind noise on your head with this. Not down there you don't. So maybe. Yeah, that's a mark difference really <laughs> so I think well, yeah we'll try that little extension I see what people are on about but then I think they're trying to go with a sports tour look and they're willing to sacrifice a little bit of functionality is my guess I did hear from a guy who's a similar size from me that you can buy a touring screen it's a lot bigger and he said it's absolutely horrible so it's just got major buffet Yeah, 
that screen's awesome. Um, I just need to spend a bit of time with it, is what I need to do. So, we'll try and go through it a system at a time. about 4,000 RPM. It's fine, it's not even running any schedules. Red line looks like it's around about just over 10. So yeah, so you can keep the throttle slightly open, kick it down in a sh with a quick shifter and it does that sort of thing. Well, that wasn't quite as marked that time. Yeah, you've got two little green arrows on the dash, and if they're both on it, that means you've got up and down available. So yes, you've got what? Sport, custom, God knows, fucking hell. God knows what that is at the moment. Rain, which is, feels like it's about to die on me. Street, which is what we've had all the way here, and then you've got sport. Probably try sport when these tyres are a bit more scrubbed in, but it certainly feels nicest. I think sport is what you want in it. A bit of sportiness. So that was straight and I wasn't exactly going for it. Same amount of throttle. Yeah, I don't know if I've I don't know if the um, camera picks up the difference, but that's certainly a lot more engaging. The rain is markedly slower, you know, very sluggish. Um, that's cool, mate. I do like it. I like it. It's interesting, like, all the reviewers are like, well, you know, it's only got a face that I've but we said about the MT-07, he said, oh, it's not very, it's not a beautiful bike, it's not a bike you could look at and go, whoa, I really like that. To be honest, I did. Not always from the front, but at certain angles of that MT-07, you're just like, oh, mate, that is ace. That's just so good. It's nice you can change modes on the fly. That's pretty cool. Street seems okay for us for now. Very different. It's a bit of a grown-up motorbike. I'm not, not usually a one for grown-up motorbikes. I'm usually for one for the sports bikes and the hyper-nay kids and all that. But yeah, I think for the next chapter, with a bit of touring and a bit of blatting around in Europe and going up and down to Manchester, I think this is this is the one. So yeah, good stuff. I can't believe I've been shopping recently for top boxes. I spent most of my motorcycling life taking a piss out of such things and just saying they're horrible why would you ever want one yeah not on a sports bike that's where we've always been but for one of these it's a different kettle of fish it's tiptoeing around the corner <laughs> So yeah, thanks for coming of your my first ride on the bike. It was um, yeah interesting <laughs> to say the least. So we'll, there'll be plenty more coming up very very soon.